You're listening to Where You Live with Gene Sullivan. Welcome back. This is Where You Live. I'm Gene Sullivan, broadcasting from the True North Painting Studios. The show is also brought to you by American Family Insurance, the Kim Bennett Agency, and Extreme Exteriors. Before I get back into our uh, uh, discussion about uh, this uh, Rolling Stone uh, article by Occupy organizer Jesse Meyerson, and I suggest you read it, which I think is probably my Mr. Jan Wenner, who owns Rolling Stone magazine, put it in there because it is uh, an astounding piece. Uh, no matter where you are, I mean, there might be some people who say, hey, uh, they're cheering for him, uh, Mr. Meyerson, all the way, and, and others are saying, what world is he living on? Uh, but whether whatever side you're on, you'll probably find it uh, a very entertaining piece. Uh, but before I do, we've got something else so I'd like to let you know about, and that's for all listeners. We have uh, a free resource that we'd like to make available to you. We put together a bi-monthly newsletter called What's New. A lot of what we talk about on the show, we talk about in further uh, detail. People that we have on the show write for the news article. Uh, people say it's uh, a great resource to have. It's yours for free. We have over 23,000 subscribers. All you need to do to start getting your copy is to give us a call during the week at 952-922-2500. Ask for Lori. She'll make sure that you start receiving it either electronically or by mail. Uh, like I said, this uh, Mr. Meyerson has got a very interesting idea on how he thinks uh, government ought to be run. When, when there's democracy, there is space for people acting weirdly and not, not um, being understandable. It's well, uh, play that play that again. That was a quote from Mr. Meyerson, wasn't it, Chris? When, when there's democracy, there is space for people acting weirdly and not not um, being understandable. Um, it it is uh, he is saying that in a democracy there is always space for people acting weirdly, and uh, I will say that uh, I agree with him in his statement. <laughs> that that uh, there is a. Uh, uh, there is some acting weirdly <laughs> with some of the ideas. And uh, he refers to his reforms again. I think I refer to them as just wishes because a reform to me would, again, uh, connotate that you would have some idea of how to make this happen. His idea was, well, government ought to make sure you work uh, and uh, that you get uh, paid a good wage if you feel like it. If not, you should have what he called Social Security for All, a universal basic income. Uh, so he said uh, then people even working at all would be a voluntary process and people could get about getting a life. Uh, you, you know what? Do you know how people really truly get a life? I don't think it's having the automatic freedom to choose how you will spend your time in idle pursuits. I think it's the character of the person who's developed through the experience that they go through in life that uh, gives them a life, that makes them a person who's worthwhile. When you stop and think about it, uh, who are some of the people that you probably uh, respect and look to the most in your life? If any of us were to stop at any point, we'd probably say, you know what, you could think of uh, a couple of people and what is it that you know about them? They probably went through something that was uh, probably very horrific. They probably went through something that was very tough. They went through tough times, and they came out on top of it. And because of that, there was some wisdom. I take a look at my life, and you know, Mr. Uh, Meyerson is concerned the fact that people are not able to get the job that they want right out of the gate. Well, I didn't get my job right out of the gate either. But I can tell you the process that I went through in becoming a teacher, then an unemployed teacher, and then trying to find something that uh, had to deal with uh, teaching and uh, no, uh, throwing newspapers didn't do it. Working at a warehouse didn't. Painting didn't. But uh, all of those things gave a uh, life experience. They gave me an understanding of people. It gave me an understanding of who I was. It gave me an understanding of business. It gave me an understanding in so many ways. 
and now I take a look at, at uh, my career in property management, and people would say, well, property management isn't teaching. But I would beg to differ. Here I am on the radio each and every week. Here I am before clients every week, in uh, week in and week out, uh, teaching and instructing and going through uh, how to operate a property, how someone's life can get a little bit uh, a little bit uh, a little bit better. And you know what? Uh, I realize I'm doing what I wanted to do. And so I think it can happen. But I don't think that this, this idea that uh, government can just guarantee it is something that is realistic at all. Another idea that uh, he has uh, in one of his uh, reforms, and this uh, deals with uh, the the real estate issue, and is why I'm talking about it on our show, because a lot of people say, well, uh, Gene, the show's about real estate. It's about owning property. It's about renting property. Well, yes, we're talking about uh, ownership, owner, ownership of assets and things, and, and uh, that's what we're talking about here. And uh, he has an idea or a reform uh, in that area, too. He says, we should just take back the land. So reform number three by Mr. Meyerson. And he begins his paragraph again uh, by saying, you know what blows landlords? Uh, <laughs> and uh, English major. Yes, an English major. Yes, exactly. Uh, you know, uh, I'm just taking a look at this, and uh, now we're getting away from our first couple reforms here from Mr. Meyerson. We're talking about him kind of uh, uh, crying out about his station in life, the fact that he doesn't have the job that he wants, um, he doesn't have the money that he thinks he should have. But now in this reform, he's turned it and he's turning on a group of people, and that group are landlords. So instead of decrying a situation, now he is uh, defaming and criminalizing a group of people uh, and trying to say, you know who is really bad in, in all of this? It is landlords. He talked about uh, in the uh, earlier sections when you talk about uh, not having a job, he referred to them as the America's banker gamblers who have only gotten rich uh, while providing new jobs that uh, created that are low wage and part time grunt work. Uh, you could just feel the bitterness in, in what he's writing. And now he says landlords. He said they don't have a right to own property. And uh, here's his reason for that. He said, uh, landlords claim ownership of buildings they haven't and don't do any work in. And they charge money to people who actually do work. Let's take a look at that statement, shall we? Landlords make claims of ownership on land and buildings that they haven't done any work for. And they just, so here he says, you know what? They've been given, here the rich has been given land and property and buildings. They didn't do anything for it. And now they get to ask other people for money month in and month out. All they're doing is getting richer and richer. Isn't this awful? Isn't this terrible? And uh, you know what? Uh, we're talking about someone who uh, has uh, showing basically a lot of envy here. You know, uh, someone uh, who is uh, coveting what someone else has done, what someone else has been able to uh, build up. Let's take a look at that statement. Um, is it true that a landlord uh, has laid claims to ownership of something that they haven't done any work for? When you take a look at a piece of land um, and you're renting an apartment from a landlord, I would say, uh, didn't he take the time to develop the land? And if he didn't develop the land himself, someone else did, and he paid them money for that. Uh, those toilets and furnaces didn't get there all by themselves uh, so someone could uh, live. Uh, you know, so you've got a furnace to heat the place. 
You've got uh, toilet and running plumbing, uh, you know, in the house. So you've got water uh, so that you can uh, live uh, in a sanitary uh, fashion. Uh, you have things that are provided for you. You have a roof so that the elements don't come in. There's a lot that a landlord is providing for someone. And instead of being pessimistic, saying, you know, landlords didn't do anything for this, um, and being and decrying, saying, well, we can't own a house, we can't own land, so other people shouldn't be able to, why not instead be thankful uh, that there are other people who, when you stop and think about it, what does a landlord provide? Well, he's providing you with something that could be of hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of value, maybe even millions of dollars if you're talking about an apartment building. And he doesn't ask that you buy the whole thing from him. He says for a little bit of money each and every month, you get use of this home. Isn't that a great thing? Isn't that a good opportunity for someone who can't uh, afford it to be able to uh, to uh, be able to uh, to live and to be able to go on with life? You know, um, people who own real estate and own their homes didn't start that way. They started out as renters. I think just about everybody who owns their home in the United States, probably most of them, earned that home and earned it at a, sp- a specific point in time, and before that, they were renting. Well, hey, we need to take a break, but don't go away. We've got a lot more to wrap up on this story. On the economic reforms, millennials should be fighting for in this Rolling Stones article of January by Mr. Jesse Meyerson, but more after these messages. 